Hello and welcome to the May edition of Nordic Stories from the National Nordic Museum in Seattle, Washington. Today we'll be reading a story from an author from Denmark. And the name of the book is called Miss Jaster's Garden and it's written by N. M. Bodeker. So before we start the book, I also want to show you we're doing a craft afterwards. And for the craft, you'll need something like a paper bag and tiny pieces of tissue paper. So you could get some colored tissue paper that might be the color of blossoms. And we will be making a blossom tree for spring. So that will be our craft that you'll be doing with me at the end. This is a story about a garden and about springtime at a house that's near the ocean side in Denmark. And the house belongs to someone named Miss Jaster. Miss Jaster's Garden. This is a golden book published from Golden Books Publishing in New York. In a corner of a garden overlooking the sea at Sandgate lived a small spiky animal called a hedgehog, hedgy for short. In the middle of the garden lived Miss Jaster in Villa Pox a square whitewashed house with flower pots on the front steps. The two did not see much of each other, but occasionally they met just after sunset when they both enjoyed strolling in the garden. On these occasions, Miss Jaster would go back into the house for a saucer of milk, which she placed at what she hoped was the right end of the hedgehog. But hedgehogs, being the shape that they are, and Miss Jaster being a little nearsighted, hmm. well, as often as not, she put the saucer where the hedgehog head wasn't. And Hedgy, so as not to cause distress, politely dipped his tail in the milk and pretended to drink. Later, when Miss Jaster went into the house, she lit the lamp on the piano and he drank the milk properly. Through the open door, he could hear Miss Jaster at the piano, her fingers fluttering up and down the keyboard, picking out little tunes as sweet as April showers. Hedgy liked being played for while he had his milk, and Miss Jaster enjoyed having someone to play for. That was the way they lived happily for a while. Then, one bright May morning, is that May? Yeah, it's May now, isn't it? When the air was soft and full of birdsong, Miss Jaster came into the garden to do her spring planting. She pulled behind her a wagon full of garden tools and flower seeds. She carried a large green watering can with the letters J, J. Can you make that? Two J's? J, J, for Jessica Jaster. It was painted on it in blue, you see. And because the sun was bright, she wore her dark glasses. These glasses made everything look brownish gray, the same color as the empty flower bed and the same color as Hedgy, who was asleep in the middle of it. Miss Jaster combed the bed lightly with a rake. Can you make a rake with your fingers and rake? Rake, rake, rake. Hmm. She sprinkled the seeds. Okay, can you sprinkle the seeds? Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Marigold and baby's breath and patches of sweet William. She showered it all gently with her watering can. Ready? Shh, never suspecting that a small spiky animal was in the middle of it. At first, Hedgy thought of moving to a safer spot, but his quills did need a combing and he rather enjoyed having his back scratched. So he stayed. He hardly felt the seeds at all. They were like dust settling amongst his quills. As for the shower from the watering can, 
It was like a gentle rain and not unpleasant at all. Do you see Hedgy? When Miss Jaster went into the house to have lunch, Hedgy went back to sleep, enjoying the most perfect dreams. Every day after that, Miss Jaster came with her watering can to sprinkle the flower bed and to watch for green shoots. And every night, Hedgy wandered through the garden, sniffing and nibbling the way hedgehogs do. Do you see Jaster? I mean, the Hedgy right there. There's Miss Jaster. But after a while, he began feeling restless. Something was happening and he didn't know what. Deep down amongst his quills, something was stirring and squirming, like a thousand tiny fingers tickling his skin. Oh, can you imagine seeds growing? Tickle, tickle, tickle. He was so itchy he couldn't sleep and so curious. He had to know what was wrong. Little things starting to sprout. Down by the tool shed where Miss Jester filled her watering can, there was a small puddle of clear water. The tap was worn and kept dripping, so Hedgy used it like a mirror. Down to this mirror he went to have a look at himself. Hmm, when he leaned over the puddle and stood quite still, his toes started curling. With disbelief, what he saw in the water was not his ordinary gray-brown prickly self, but something quite different. Peeping out from among his quills were little spikes and shoots of green, ready to climb and bloom and fill with honey and bees. Well, he said to himself, now I'm either a flower bed or a vegetable garden. I wonder which. When Miss Jaster came with her watering can that evening, Hedgy was back in his old spot. The whole flower bed was full of little spikes and shoots of green. So pleased was Miss Jaster that she played the entire Blue Daniel Waltz on her piano twice over before going to bed. Do you see Hedgy? And there's Miss Jaster at the piano. But Hedgy was only half listening. Hmm, flower bed or vegetable garden? Vegetable garden or flower bed, he kept saying to himself. Which am I, I wonder? The fact was that during the day he had the most alarming dreams. At first he dreamt he was covered with tomato plants. Oh no, one by one the tomatoes ripened and dropped off the vine squashing on his head and ripping on his quills until he looked like he was covered in tomato sauce. And then he dreamed that the vines changed. They grew longer and heavier and were covered with large yellow flowers and the flowers turned into huge ripe melons. Do you see Hedgy? Oh no, he could not move another step. They kept dragging behind him. At that moment he woke up all over him and, and all around him were growing plants. If only he could be sure they weren't tomatoes or melons. But early the next morning, he went down to the tool shed nosing about until he found the seed packs. Hedgy pulled the packs out from the floor in front of him. Marigold, baby's breath, and sweet William. <sighs> he did not know their names, but he recognized the pictures on the packets. They weren't tomatoes or melons. Much relieved, he went to have a look at himself in the puddle. I believe I shall be quite handsome, he said. And then he toddled off to bed. Not many days after this, Hedgy woke up early in the afternoon feeling the ple presence of a strange new something that hadn't been there the day before. Whoa, can you even see Tiny Hedgy right here? Wow, he lay still, wiggling his nose and sniffing. He opened his eyes and flowers were all around him. 
marigolds and baby's breath and patches of sweet William. I'm in bloom, cried Hedgy, and he hurried down to the tool shed to look at himself. But no matter how long he looked or how hard he tried, he could only find one word to describe what he saw. Stupendous! And even that was not really the word he wanted. He's so amazed. While he stood there in the sunshine, a small cloud of butterflies and bees gathered around him, huttering and humming, flumming. You see, look, so many blooms and all the butterflies and the bees. Hedgie didn't mind. He was not afraid of bees. After all, a bee only has one stinger, he thought, and I have over 2,000. And who ever heard of anyone being afraid of butterflies? But Hedgie wasn't really thinking about the hum and flutter around him. Something inside him was bursting to get out. <gasps> Something special that makes birds sing and poets rhyme and puppy dogs chase their tails. Suddenly his feet began to do little dance steps in the dust all on their own. And one moment they looked as though they were waltzing. The next moment they were going to do a tap dance and then a skip and a jump and then a slow turn around the puddle. Oh, it can't be helped, thought Hedgy as he waltzed into the flower bed. I really shouldn't do this. And he jumped over the marigolds. Oh, look, at he's just frolicking. But he absolutely must, he said, as he burst onto the lawn, skipping and jumping and kicking his heels. Around the fish pond, he raced. Well, behind him trailed bees and butterflies like a cloud of flower petals. Tomorrow I will be as quiet as an earthworm, thought Hedgie, but not today. Today is the greatest day of my life. There will never be another day like it. And the bees and the butterflies, tired of chasing their food around the lawn, hoped he was right. Miss Jaster had been dozing in her wicker chair when she saw, or believed she saw, a small patch of flower bed jump onto the lawn and head for the gate. At first she thought it must be a dream, but then when she found she was quite awake, she said the first thing that came into her head, Stop! Thief! she called, and then at, top, at the top of her voice, Stop! Thief! Oh dear, thought Hedgie, the flowers were indeed Miss Jaster's and not his. Taking them out of the flower bed, even if it only was to perform a midsummer's dance around the fish pond, did make him a type of thief. Oh, if only Miss Jaster had remained in her chair, Hedgie would have gone back to his place in the flower bed, much chastened. She jumped up, waving her parasol, and poor Hedgie, now quite frightened, dashed through the gate and down the road and into the village. In a small cloud of dust, many yards behind, came Miss Jaster. Her knitting, her parasol, her cries for help. Oh, look at them running. Who is this? Oh. Then up the road from the village came the police constable on his bicycle, making what speed he could uphill towards Miss Jaster, who was carrying a parasol to her, oh, to his sister Winsley. Ah. For Hedgie, there was only one thing left to do. He scurried among the wildflowers at the roadside and lay stock still, hoping not to be seen. Can you freeze? Hedgie's frozen. And half an hour later, Wimple the constable at last understood or believed he understood what happened. Hmm. I quite understand, miss. He said, but one last question, please. Did you by any chance happen to notice how many legs these flowers had when they made their getaway in round numbers? Oh, a great many, Constable, she said firmly, a great many. Wimple licked his pencil and added his description of the fugitive. Legs, he wrote, numerous. Very good, miss, and we'll have your zinnias back in no time at all. Marigolds, said Miss Jaster, and she went into her garden. Of course, 
said Wimple, and he moved off down the road. In the 16 years he had been the Sandgate on Sea, Constable, no one had ever reported a missing flower bed. Hmm, sometimes the children pick a few plums or apples that aren't exactly theirs, he said, and sometimes, I suppose, they pick a few flowers that, strictly speaking, belong to someone else, but when the flower beds start running off on their own, hmm, he shook his head sadly. He tried to decide how he should begin. Hmm, put yourself in the fugitive's place, the constable always told him. Hmm, imagine you were running away. Where would you hide? Hmm. If I were a flower, thought Wimple. A flower? He could imagine himself a cabbage or a melon, and for some reason even an artichoke. But a flower? He looked around them. Where would a flower? Of course! He said, slapping his hand against his helmet, that's where I should hide amongst the other flowers. He stared down the road, poking among the weeds and the wildflowers, looking for Marigold's baby's breath and a patch of sweet William. Hmm, but it was nearly sunset two days later before he brought Hedgie back to Villa Pax on a leash. Did he find him? Look! Oh, no, do you see Hedgie's flowers are all wilted? Never in his life has he had Hedgie felt so sad, so tired, and so helplessly small. His feet were sore, his flowers had wilted. He was weary, worried, and a bedraggled little animal, down on his luck. <gasps> Goodness sakes, said Miss Jaster. It's the hedgehog! Flower hog is more like it, said Wimple. But Miss Jaster had already gone into the house. She came back shortly with a saucer of milk. This time she took no chance, but knelt down right there on the garden steps and put the milk in front of Hedgie. She was quite sure this time, for she saw his little eyes like two tiny drops of India ink in his fur. They were looking straight into her own. A little later, freed from the leash and fed and showered, Hedgie toddled back to his flower bed. Can you see her giving the milk to Hedgie? The constable, having enjoyed the little homemade gooseberry wine in a friendly chat, returned to the village. Miss Jaster lit the lamp on her piano, but tonight her heart was not in the Blue Danube waltz. She kept thinking about the friendly little hedgehog and the frightful stare, scare she must have given him. After a while, she turned off the lamp and sat looking into the garden till the moon rose behind the junipers. Early the next morning, Hedgie met Miss Jaster on the front steps. She was carrying a tray with her own breakfast and Hedgie's milk. That morning and many mornings after, they had breakfast together in the fish pond, and Miss Jaster sat in her wicker chair and Hedgie in the grass. Can you see Hedgie? Hedgie still has flowers. After a leisurely breakfast, they went for a walk along the beach, followed by a small but persistent butterfly, and at the end of the breakwater they sat down, Miss Jaster dangling her feet in the water and Hedgie resting his nose on his paws. And there was nothing but peace and sunshine and a touch of sweet William. And that is... The end. Yay, and there's the map of Miss Jaster's garden and the seaside. So now, if you have a paper bag and something that might be like tissue paper or little pink pieces of paper that you might make into blossoms, let's do a nice springtime craft where we make a cherry blossom tree. And now we're going to make a craft of a cherry blossom tree 
out of a paper bag with some tissue paper flowers. You can make a smaller tree or you can make a larger tree depending on how much paper bag you use. But right in here I have just like a lunch sack. And the nice thing is, is you're just gonna make this into bark so you can tear it up. Open it all the way up. You can take the bottom part off, and you'll just be left with the main part of the bag. And then at this point, I actually get the paper bag a bit wet. So if you have like a slightly damp sponge, you can wet the paper and you'll crinkle it. What that'll do is when you're all done, it gives the paper some texture, so it makes it look more like tree bark. And you can let it dry a little bit, or you can just start uh, making your trees. So what you'll do is you'll kind of start twisting it. And leaving a little bit to be like the base of the tree, like this and you can trim it later. But you just twist, 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 and if it's a little bit damp, it helps. And again, the tighter you do it, the smaller your tree will be. And then when you get to about the height that you think your tree should be, then you'll take some scissors or you can just tear down to make strips. And these strips, end up being the branches and again you can wet the paper bag so that it kind of is easier to work with and you'll take these smaller strips and you'll do the same thing where you twist 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 as tight as you can see how tight i'm twisting and these become the branches now they can be quite long and then you can cut them to whatever length you'd like as you'll see on this tree here. And this one has about, should we count them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe about eight branches. So you can kind of see if you can make eight little uh, slices or twists off of your main. Or if you end up making less, it could look like a big tree. So this is kind of like the grandmother tree. And this is the young baby tree. And then what you do is I've actually added a little bit of Mod Podge, or you could use just regular Elmer's glue or a white glue. Just to keep it nice and straight and stiff, I add the Mod Podge and I will um, just paint it and twist and let it dry. And that'll also make these little branches a little stiffer too. So if you want to add the Mod Podge or some glue and then let it dry, that helps. And then once you've got it sitting and it's kind of dried a bit, then you'll take tiny squares of tissue paper. So you, if you have pink, light pink, dark pink, you can buy a pack of tissue paper. Or if you have just leftover wrapping paper or white tissue paper that you can color, or any kind of pink paper, what you do is you just take a small square and then an, an eraser and you kind of wrap it around that eraser and then you take a little dab, it could be with your paintbrush of the glue, and you just attach that onto your branch and it ends up looking like a blossom like that. You can attach a couple colors together to make a pretty blossom or just single blossoms all around your tree like this. And then what you have is a beautiful springtime blossom tree. So that's a great way of using a paper bag and some tissue paper for a spring craft. I hope you have fun.